Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Filter in Photoshop Explained, we're going to be taking a look at the blur filters. So this is how we can blur our images, and your standard go-to here, I'm going to go in order, these are just alphabetically listed, but your standard go-to is usually just going to be the Gaussian blur. This is a simple way to blur that just allows us to choose a radius amount, so this is kind of like the strength, all the way from 0 to 1000, and you can see all the strengths in between, we just get a general blurring of all of them. It's mathematical, the Gaussian, the term Gaussian is just the name of a mathematician. A lot of editing in general has to do with math, but that's besides the point. It's basically blurring these pixels based on a certain algorithm. And remember, whenever we're working with smart filters, so if I convert this to a smart object, like we showed in the first episode of this series, and let's say I applied that same blur. In this case, we have the smart filter, so I can always uncheck it. I can go back and double click it and adjust the blending amounts of it. So if I just put that at 50% opacity, now we get this kind of dreamy, hazy blur because it's half and half mixed with the original. You can even put that on blending modes to get different types of hazy looks. But there's a lot you can do with smart filters and layer masks regardless of the layer, such as just blurring with gradients or one half. That's a really simple but cool looking technique right there. Next up, just going down the list again, we have average. So average is an interesting one. It takes all of the pixels in the image and then adds them all together and just finds the average color and makes your entire image that color, which can come in handy in lots of different situations. In this case, we're getting this medium blue because the whole photo is kind of blue. But just to show you on another example, I'd imagine this will be like a brownish yellow when I do it. So yeah, you can see how average is just blending everything and just picking one color out of it, which can be cool. And remember, you can even do, let's say you're trying to get a color palette out of an image. If I just get the average out of this section using the rectangular marquee tool, I can blur that to an average. And then if I right click select inverse, and do this section, you see we get different averages. So that's one idea how you can use it to make color palettes and stuff out of sections. But you know, there's never one right way to use stuff in Photoshop. These tools are all just there for you. Another blur we have is just blur. Now this is a very subtle blur. You see when I, if I zoom in real far, if I add just the blur, you can see it just barely adds a tad of blur. It's kind of like the opposite of the filter sharpen effect, which we'll see in a later episode. Another one is blur more. It's just like blur, but a little bit more. And you can see the more I keep repeating that over and over, even if I use that shortcut, control command F and do it a bunch of times, we just get a tad bit more blurry each time. Now, the next one we have is box blur. This one, as the name suggests, instead of like the Gaussian blur was just a smooth blur. This one will blur more in square type of shapes or box shapes. And you can see that separation happening, how it's splitting each corner into four. Now lens blur is grayed out right now, but if I rasterize this layer again and go to lens blur, I should be able to select it. And what lens blur does, similar kind of to the box blur, is it allows us to blur as if it was a real camera lens and get some of that bokeh look. So it opens up its own little panel here and you can choose the blur amount and the iris shape. So let's just say I increase that a lot and I can do like a triangle, for example. And if I increase the focal distance, you can see now we're getting an entirely triangle bokeh image. You even have some options on the specular highlights. So you can see if I adjust the threshold and brightness, I can make some of those white lights appear a lot brighter. So you can change the shape to be whatever you want. I can do triangle, square, or more just like traditional circular types of shapes. And you could use layer masks as well to perhaps add a lens blur onto the image. But then if I added a layer mask here, I could make the foreground maybe not blurry. Another really useful one when you don't just want a general blur and you want a directional blur is motion blur. So this one allows you to blur within a motion. 
this can be really cool to add motion to an image or even to stylize text or shapes and you can make it go any direction you want similar to that is radial blur except in this case instead of going on one angle we're going circular or zoom so it's you don't get the same type of menu but you can actually choose the blur center as well by dragging around this point and the amount strength and then you can choose spin or zoom and when you press ok you'll see that it will spin around whatever center point you chose so that's a bit strong but we have a circular blur there if i edit undo that i can try to show you what a zoom might look like let's say at a lower strength in this case we have the zoom blur there which also creates some pretty cool results that you couldn't get with just like a motion blur another one similar to the box blur is shape blur so not only can you blur in a box but any one of the shapes that's loaded in your custom shape menu which is this tool right here you can choose to blur with so if for some reason I wanted to blur in the shape of a right arrow I can try to apply that and it will kind of blur things with that shape in mind if I want to blur in the shape of a fish I can try to do that and you might see that that shape being used so it just affects the way that the pixels are kind of separated apart Lastly, we have Smart Blur and Surface Blur. So Smart Blur tries to keep the edges of the shape in mind. However, it blurs things within it. So if I increase the radius a bunch, I can also adjust the threshold based to say what edge should be considered. The lower, the more edges, the higher the threshold, the more stuff will fall into the blur. But I can increase the amount of blur there. And if I press OK, you'll see it's different from your traditional blur all the edges kind of stay how they were, except it almost takes on this painterly type of quality. Not only necessarily could this be used for this painterly effect, but if you wanted to smooth skin out a little bit or just smooth the insides of whatever shape or what's in your photo, this could be a way to just smooth up the, the surfaces without having to uh, mess up the edges like a Gaussian blur would do. Another one similar to that is the surface blur. So again, this is trying to blur the surfaces of the image, but you can adjust the threshold of what is being actually considered an edge or not. So the lower the threshold, the more it's trying to retain that edge. So that's a very brief introduction, but explanation of all the different blurs available in Photoshop. If you enjoyed this tutorial, definitely check out the whole playlist. I'm going over every filter in Photoshop explained. And then the next episode, we're gonna take a look at a couple more blurs with their own tool sets and unique spins in the blur gallery. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.